The wokeness wave that swept the world has bemused many of us, including, for a time, South Africa's Iron Lady of Politics, the former leader of the official opposition, Helen Ziller. This one-time award-winning journalist turned social activist found herself on the wrong side of an attack that threatened to end her political career and to tear apart the Democratic Alliance, the party that she spent much of her working life helping to build. It looked like you were gone, you were finished, you were going to be ejected, and you write about this in your latest book, Stay Work, Go Broke. We've got to start on that part of the story, when the party that you'd help to create in many ways, where the leader that you'd certainly supported for many years, Musi Maimani, turned against you, and it looked to the outsiders anyway that that was the end of Helen Zilla. Now you're the chairman of the party. In your wildest dreams at the time that you were under such an extreme attack, think that was possible? No, I didn't, and I never planned it at all that way. It was puzzling to me how this thing unfolded, and that is what encouraged me to quite a great extent to read up about critical race theory, about the ideology that seems to have grabbed the DA at that particular time. And so I got very involved in understanding this, and that was really the start of my book. What is work? Well, work is an approach to the world that predetermines a person's value position and contribution to society in terms of their biology. And the notion that all of history is merely a litany of self-service by white heterosexual males of their own interests and power. And that to be woke means dedicating your life to overturning that hierarchy. Critical race theory uh, has been stewing away in American and British universities for a long time, well over a decade, probably two or three. And as you know, we just simply follow whatever the fad is in America and Britain. In South Africa, where the ratios are inverted, where black people are the overwhelming majority, it doesn't cause any self-reflection about the abuse and abuse of power. Quite the opposite. It provides a moral fig leaf for the continued concentration of power and abuse of that power. And that is why it is so dangerous. Populations are on the move. Whatever you try to do to stop them or to reverse the tide, populations are moving and they're moving with their cultures and with their prejudices and with their worldviews. In the medium and long term, the world is going to have to learn how we cross those barriers and live together in the same country. And that is why wokeness is so dangerous, because it is a smokescreen for what will become an assault on the Constitution. No doubt about that. There is, though, a view that, well, we've got Ramaphosa now and things are going to improve. ACE is going to get the, the boot soon. Not at all. Not at all. For every ACE, there's a couple of jokers, believe me, and uh, they're all behind there being deployed. We have to push back with everything we've got and not be entranced by mellifluous words from Cyril Ramaphosa.